Realistic pencil shading is a beautiful art form that is also incredibly difficult, especially if you're working on those smooth gradients, those smooth blends. Now, while there are many tools that you can use, whether it's in post digitally or you know, at the drawing table with like a blending stump or a paintbrush, there are several techniques that will help you receive that smooth blend without using any blending tools at all. And not only showcases your beautiful artwork, but it also helps to show off your skill. Now, I am not anti-blending tool. Uh, I love using a blending tool in my flower shading course. We use blending tools at the end, but I have found that those who are able to make it work without the blending tool have even more success with the blending tools. There's just something about honing the skill of your hands, getting those fine motors really you know, tightened up and ready to go, that will really take you to the next level. So today I'm excited to share with you some of my very favorite blending tool free ways to get that smooth gradient with your pencil shading. The first one might come as a surprise to you because many people will talk about when they're talking about working with a pencil going in the same direction. And I even talk about it as well. So if you're working on shading a shape, you go in the same direction for a while. But if you want to kind of blend everything together, you lighten your hold a little bit and create a soft shade in the opposite direction. So if you were going back and forth for a while, you want to kind of switch and go up down. Now when you're blending it together to get kind of that smooth gradient, you want to be very light when you're going the other direction. But this will fill in different areas that that maybe the texture of the paper is showcasing where, you know, maybe there's like a little dip in the paper. Again, these are like very minute, but where the graphite is having trouble get, getting in there, going in the other direction is sometimes all that you need to kind of smash it down in there and really get everything nice and smooth. Along the same lines, another trick that I often use is especially at the end of the shading process where I'm just kind of looking back and I'm finding texture areas that I'm having trouble with or different areas that need to be just smoothed down is a nice sharp pencil. Now in general, when blending and when shading, I recommend having a more dull pencil. It's a little easier. You kind of don't have a lot of the pencil scratches or pencil lines. But at the, for that very fine tuning aspect, I highly recommend sharpening your pencil. This again, we're working on getting in those little divots that can be really tricky. You wanna kind of smash that in there. Now, use a light hand. The pressure just by having that single point, that more narrow point, will help enough to kind of blend everything in and smash everything in without you pressing hard. So you really wanna make sure that your hand is pulled back on your pencil and you're working very lightly. And last but not least is something that I think is a little bit underutilized. I've actually found that if I'm having trouble getting something quite as light as I want it to be, that I go a little bit heavier. Now again, not scarring the paper, we're not like smashing the pencil in here, but I might go a little heavier and I'm going to go in a couple of different directions on my paper. So I'm take, going back and forth, going to go back and forth in the other direction, and then I take my kneaded eraser and I will lightly pick up some of that pigment. That I found is a great way that helps me to just kind of pick up some of that pigment, really kind of get that gradient where I want it to be, and I'm able to kind of just pick at it in such a way where I'm going from lightest to darkest. So some of the graphite is now on that kneaded eraser and I'm picking up less and it really gives me a nice smooth finish. I do still find that in general to get it where I want it to be, I have to go over it with a pencil one more time. Really gives me that nice smooth finish. Now there are many wonderful shading tools on the market and I think that they're great. Don't get me wrong, I do love to use them. In fact, I had it out here just a minute ago, but I have a paintbrush shaped kind of like this, but significantly smaller that I love to use for shading in. And I, again, I go over that a lot in my pencil shading course, but I do think there's something to be said about learning not to depend on those things, learning not to use it as a crutch. I think that it really helps to level up our skills. That really helps us to work on our understanding a little bit better when we have a little more control over our pencil rather than always depending on blending tools to get it quite as smooth and crisp. It also, you're able to keep some of the edges a little bit more smooth if you're working with a pencil rather than having a blending tool. It tends to, you kind of have to go back and forth, at least in my experience with, you know, you'll be blending a little bit and then you have to go back and tighten everything up because you don't want it to have a fuzzy effect overall. You just want the gradient to be smooth. So those are my three tips for realistic pencil shading. I hope that you found it helpful. I would love to hear your favorite tips in the comment section down below. And with that being said, I hope that you are having a wonderful, wonderful day. And until next time, happy drawing. Having a wonderful, blah, blah. Now there are many, 
Ciao.